Hey folks, welcome to another video on subquery where this time I'll be talking about mapping filters and how they work. Let's first of all jump into the documentation here. And on the left hand side under create a project, I'll go into the manifest file. This is also known as the project.yaml file, and this is what it looks like. We'll be focusing this video on mappings, in particular, the filter down below. So on the right hand side, let's click on mapping filters and take a look at what they are. First of all, they are extremely useful to decide what block, event or extrinsic will trigger a mapping handler. What this means is that only incoming data that satisfies the filter conditions will be processed by your mapping function. They are optional, but they are highly recommended because they significantly reduce the amount of data that your project processes, hence improving your performance. There are a couple of options here. You can see in the event handler, you can filter on module or method for the call handler similar except there's an additional success filter and for block handler we've got spec version so it's all fine reading this but to actually understand how it works let's see this in action so the first thing i'll do is we'll jump into visual studio code and i'm going to create the standard starter project Let's now go and cd into this directory. And I'll just go yarn install first of all. And let's open up the schema file here. This is the standard file. I'll also open up the manifest file here. Again, just the default that we're used to. You can see we've got the filter already in place. And then I'll also open up the actual mapping handler file. So the first thing that I always do is I get this up and running just to make sure that the code is still working. So after you've done a yarn install, the next thing you'll do is a code gen. What this does is it creates a new directory called types over here, which contains all the generated entities in assembly script. It generates an entity class for each type that you've defined previously in your schema.graphql file. These classes provide type safe entity loading, read and write access to the entity fields as well. After this, let's go ahead and build the code. And then I'll run docker compose pull to grab the image. And then I'll start docker by running docker compose up. Now this should run with no errors. And if you've got an existing project that you're experimenting on, then you can skip all these steps. Okay, so here you can see that the project is running successfully because we're fetching blocks. So let me go ahead and cancel this. We'll stop the node and we'll turn our attention to the manifest file. So I did mention that this project here is filtering on module balances and a method called deposit. So what does this actually mean? To help you understand, let's jump into the a website called polka.subscan. And if I inspect any particular block, such as this one here, say, inside, jump into the events tab, you can see we've got this column called actions. We've got balances transfer, treasury deposit, balances deposit as well. This is what we are filtering on. So what it means is that if I want to inspect the events of this block, I can jump into it and I have to do a for loop and read each one. There are five events here. So I read this one, then this one, etc. 
But what I'm saying is that if I filter on balance.deposit, right, if I go back here, I'm saying a balance.deposit, then all I want to do is read this one and this one. So this means I don't have to do a loop of uh, one, two, three, four, five items, but I've only got an array or a list of two items, this one and this one. So we can throw away or ignore these three other events. And this is what makes the performance increase so much because we're not inspecting every single event. So again, just to recap, the module here is referring to the first part here, balances, treasury, etc. And the method is referring to the, the argument or the parameter in the brackets. Now you might be asking in your next question, how do I know what other options I have? Let's go up to the top here and we'll go into events. And it's actually under modules. So if I click this drop down, you can filter on any one of these modules. So it could be balances, it could be claims, council, etc. These are your possible values. And if I go under balances, under event, these are the events or the methods that I can use, such as deposit, endowed, transfer that we saw, reserved. So this is your list of possible values. Now, it doesn't help that the terminology is different because here module and events are used. Here we've got module and method. And in this actual table, it's actually under the actions column. So let's go ahead and run this again and prove to ourselves that we're actually filtering on balances deposit. To do this, what I can do is jump into my event handler and I'm going to add some logging. And this is a useful uh, skill or technique to have where I go logger.info. Let's put a new line first. And I will output it was... module so let's go and then I'm going to add this line here it's event dot event dot method now just hang with me here because I'm just going to do the second part which we'll call a method And this will be event, event dot section. Now you might be wondering, how do I know this? Well, let's go ahead and inspect event because this event here is of type substrate event. So let's go to my uh, definition here. This is my substrate event object. This extends event record. Inside my event record, it extends event. And inside my event, this extends generic event. And inside generic event, I've got my method and my section. So this is how you can traverse event.event.method and event.event.section. So let's go ahead and rebuild this code and see what happens. Another tip is that let's check out the current block height. It's around 7,091,105. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go ahead and change my start block. Instead of one, I'm going to start from a very recent block number. This is just to save some time because I don't want to index right from the beginning of time, from block one, it'll take forever. And if I do this, what you need to remember is I have to delete my database. This is in my data directory under Postgres. 
I have to delete this. So I'm starting all over again. And let's go and build it. And then I'll run Docker Compose. Now I have to delete the database because it's already started indexing at a specific block number. It's remembered that number. So if I change it halfway, the database is not going to like it. So I'm going to get an error. There we go. So the node has synchronized and now it's filtering. You can see I've got module, deposit and balances. It's fetching blocks. So if we go ahead and do a comparison inside block 159, I've got a deposit and a balance. So we can do a cross check. Let's see if we can find 159. Scrolling down here, 159. Under events. And I've got my balance.deposit, this one here. So you can see that this filter is actually working as intended. So what I'm saying is in my project, give me all the events where I've got a module of balance and a method of deposit. So just give me this information here. So next, let's go ahead and try to change this. Let's try to update it. So let me cancel the node first and say we want to change this to say uh, balances.transfer, this one here. Now the key is I can't just go balance and then go transfer like so and then just expect this to work because if I do, uh, you'll get an error. So you can see here, it's started to fetch the blocks, but then I've got an error saying it's failed to index a block. Type error, a balance dot too big int is not a function. Now this error is saying that balance here dot too int doesn't work because field number three is not valid. The reason why field number three is not valid is because Balance here is part of the data set we're trying to get out from event. So this balance is this balance up here. And there's actually two parameters. There's account and balance. Now this was for balance.deposit. So if I open up balances deposit, I can show you uh, what's happening. In balance.deposit, we have two arguments. We've got who, so who made the deposit, and the deposit amount. This is why we've got account and balance. In fact, we should give them the same name. And if I do that, it'll make it a lot clearer. So let's say this one here, account, we'll call it who, and this one we'll call deposit, for instance. So if we do this one here, this is what it actually looks like. There we go. But what we've done now is we've changed the filter to balances.transfer, this one here at the top. If I expand this, you'll notice that the arguments within, or the data, is actually different. We've got three parameters. We've got from, to, and value. The from address, the to address, and the value, the amount which is the same as the deposit actually. So in actual fact, if I want to filter on balances.transfer, I need to change the data that I'm pulling out. This should be from, I need to, and again, I'll just call this a value as well. What this means is that I can take the value and put it here. The who, let's just say we want it to be from. And the two, we don't actually have a field for two, but what I could do is say a record field six equals, and then I'd go two to string like so. 
I'll comment that out because I don't have field six, but I could go ahead and add it to my schema file as well. So now we've made these changes. We are going to filter on a balances.transfer. We've got the correct arguments coming out from the data object. So let's go ahead and rebuild this. And we'll run this in Docker. And what we would expect to get is the data coming back in our console only to be balances.transfer. And there we go. You can see the console log showing transfer and balances. So we're filtering on just the data that we want. Now, if you want to take this to the next level and say, well, if I'm filtering on balances and transfer, then I've got access to the parameters from to and value. Can I grab those out as well and display it in the console log? Well, we can indeed. Let's go ahead and in our logger, we'll go, um, let's copy this. Just as an example, I'll just display the, the balance or the value, so to speak. So let's go value. And to access this one here, this is a balance you can see that I've already accessed it up above. So it's actually record field three. So let's paste this in like so. And the from here, I can reference this as record dot field number two. So let's go and I'll go field number two. And I could do the two, uh, two address as well, but I'll just leave that out in the interest of time let's go ahead and cancel the node let's rebuild this and we'll run this back in docker and we'll do a cross check so you can see here the node has started i've got data coming out it's filtered by balances and transfer, and I've got the value coming out and the from address as well. So we can go ahead and cross check this just to make sure that the data is correct. If I go back to subscan, let's go pick a block. We've got 261 here. So let me just uh, pause this one, cancel it. I'll go and find 261, which is down here. So in 261, over here, we can go into events and you can see I've got my balance transfer up here. So I'll expand this and I'm expecting my balance to be uh, 581. So let's go and double check. And the value here, you can see it's exactly the same down here, 581, 581. It's just that there are decimal places here. If you count them up, there'll be 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 decimal places. So there you have it. A very quick example of how filters work. You know where to get these parameters from or these options or values. You can go to subscan. You can go select events and pick the module and events you want to filter on put it in here and this will make your query a lot faster as well going back to the documentation here the mapping file we gave an example of how it could be applied to the event handler you can do exactly the same thing to the call handler but not for the block handler so just note that for the block handler you can only filter on spec version however the call handler you can go ahead down here and I can basically do the same thing down here as well if I wanted to. So there you have it. Mapping handlers inside your manifest file in order to increase the efficiency and performance 
of your project. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you on the next video.